Hey everybody, Alex Kazora, SteelersDepot.com, back with some more Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. What a crazy busy Friday for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let's talk about it. Before we start, if you guys could like this video, also subscribe to the channel, check out the site SteelersDepot.com, would really appreciate that. So to recap the day, which has been insane, I'm recording this 7 p.m., Friday evening, so who knows what will happen in, by the time you guys listen to this, but Pittsburgh met with Russell Wilson on Friday. They released Patrick Peterson. They released Allen Robinson. They're going to visit with veteran center Mitch Morse, and they have signed nose tackle Braden Bahoko. Those are, I think, the primary moves of the day. Starting off with Russell Wilson, we'll see. I don't know how this quarterback situation is going to go. I think what it's going to come down to for Wilson is where can he go to a win and B start? And it might be a start and B win, but he wants, I think both of those things in the final years of his career. I think Pittsburgh can provide those things despite them, you know, framing everything as a competition with Kenny Pickett. And if Wilson signs, I think Pittsburgh will still publicly frame things as, Oh, it's a competition between Wilson and Pickett. To me, it's hard not to see Wilson start the season. And I think he could sit there and say, yeah, they'll call it a competition, but I can beat out Kenny Pickett. And if I can't, well, my career is probably over anyway. That's my interpretation of it. Now, if you can get just his top line production from last year, the numbers on paper do look good. 26 touchdowns, only eight picks, a pretty high completion rate. You take that if you're Pittsburgh. He threw more touchdowns last year than Pittsburgh has the last two seasons combined, 26 to 25. So I get that. And I think Pittsburgh's mantra or their mindset is, you know, if Wilson starts, we can get just better quarterback play overall. That will get us over this hump of being unable to win a playoff game. And that angst and that feeling, that drought, I think is really in the building right now. You could sense it even from Art Rooney the second. if we have to win a playoff game. Super Bowl is always their aspiration, and I get that, even though they're not a contender right now, but they have to win a playoff game as that first step. And Wilson, I think to them, might be that thing that gets them over the top while also being pretty economical and financially friendly and a pretty unusual opportunity to get a guy like that because of the contract situation with Denver. If the, if the contract situation wasn't what it was with the offset and Denver on the hook for his salary then he's probably not in the running for Pittsburgh because he would cost too much that would make him the de facto starter and pick it, you know, close the book on that. But, you know, I'll have to do a deep dive if they sign Wilson um, in terms of his play. I'm pretty skeptical of things. I think his play's been declining. There's been too much negativity, sacked too much, holds onto the ball too long. Um, Denver clearly wanted him gone despite the $85 million dead money charge to release him. They're going to pay him. $40 million to not play for them in 2024, which I think speaks to where they think his game is at. I know there's layers to that, and Sean Payton wasn't the man in charge when Wilson got traded to Seattle, and there's the injury guarantee, but point is they were very clearly ready to move on from Russell Wilson, and there's a reason for that. Mitch Morse, it's pretty clear they will sign a veteran center at some point before the draft begins. The question is who and what that cost is, and will it basically take them out of the running for drafting a center early? Now, Morse is about to be 32, released in that cap casualty that Buffalo had with a bunch of their guys uh, earlier this week. Would want to see the number on that contract with Morse. If you get him for you know $4 million, hypothetically, two years, $8 million, then you can probably sit there and justify him being the backup in 2024 if you were to draft a center high. If it's more than that, if it's probably more than what Mason Cole got when he signed two years ago, which I think was around, I think, five or six million per year, then it's kind of hard to have that guy on the bench. So I think Pittsburgh would want to draft a center. It's a good center class. Somebody like Jackson Powers Johnson, Zach Frazier. Um but I would want to see the, the money on Morris if that happens. And maybe he wants seven or eight million and Pittsburgh says we can't commit to that and we won't do that. It's going to be a visit. We'll see where it goes. Um, I think he probably can still play. He played, I think, pretty well last year for Buffalo. But Pittsburgh will, will be signing a veteran center. It just depends on the caliber of player. With Robinson, I thought the door was left open for a restructure, which really 
would have meant a pay cut for him. I don't know if that conversation happened. It felt like maybe it was considering how late in the process they released Robinson here Friday right before the start of the new league year in the, in the tampering period around the time that the rest of the NFL is dumping uh, the guys they uh, intended to cut. But I'm fine with him being cut. I mean, he was somebody that, yeah, a leader, you know, on paper. I don't know how much that leadership really helped considering kind of the chaos this year. I'm sure Robinson tried his best, but only so much you can do as one player. Uh, he could block, and he was a willing guy to do that. He does have good hands, made some key possession grabs, but, I mean, he was, you know, a glorified tight end, if, if that. He averaged 8.2 yards per catch. Longest reception was 31 yards, had nine first downs on, I think, 34 receptions. There was no downfield big play threat with him at all and it's not going to get better as he gets older so he did his job for 2023 what Pittsburgh needed him to be a blocker a big slot make the occasional catch on third down but you, you knew when you traded for him that he wasn't going to play on his base salary at 10 million in 2024 and so this is just a logical end to where this thing was going to happen when they dealt for him last year. Peterson, I will say, surprised me, and I thought towards the end of the Steelers' season and right after the season ended against Buffalo that they were going to keep Peterson. I felt pretty confident in that. And then on one of the recent podcasts that he had with Brian McFadden, he seemed pretty unsure and frankly pessimistic about whether or not he would stay in Pittsburgh, which gave me pause, but I still thought there was a chance they would keep him. They hadn't cut him yet. They'd cut, you know, Cole and Trubisky, a core for Harvin. You thought you might do right by the veteran and give him a bunch of time if, if you felt like he was not going to be part of your plans. Of course, had that roster bonus due uh, next week that was going to be your decision line, and, and we see the way Pittsburgh goes with that. So, you know, obviously a guy declining, couldn't play outside corner anymore, wasn't quite sure of his role for 2024 had he stayed slot safety hybrid post snap rotation something like that would have been my guess but Pittsburgh obviously moving on and I get that because of the decline in play and even if he went to safety is not a strong safety and you got make it free safety how does that all you know fit together but you will have to replace a bunch of those snaps the versatility I think that leadership in the secondary had certainly value to it, mentoring Joey Porter Jr. So I, I don't want to brush this one aside and say, you know, that you can easily replace him the way I think you can pretty easily replace Allen Robinson. I know people will disagree with that. I'm probably higher on Peterson more than most for what his role could have been, should have been. Again, not playing outside corner, playing slot where the speed is less of an issue. But Pittsburgh has to replace about a thousand snaps there. And that is not a simple thing to do. And then re-signing Fahoka, which is the most minor move of the day, was signed last year from the Chargers, did not play in a game for Pittsburgh on the practice squad for most of the year, was on the 53 for, I don't know, four to six weeks when Cam Hayward got hurt in week one and went on IR, but Fahoka did not play. Old school run stuffing, no stackle, but with Montrevious Adams, a pending free agent, Armand Watts, a pending free agent, you know, get Fahoko back, that's fine. Now, again, he's he is who he is. He's a first and second down base package. No stackle, but maybe depth behind Keanu Benton. Still, Pittsburgh will have to upgrade his defensive line that's older and aging and just needs more youth and talent. So that's my reaction to where things stand right now. There'll be a lot more commentary going forward, of course, but I wanted to check in. I know there probably isn't a lot of video here. It's been a crazy day. I wanted to get my thoughts up. I apologize for that, but I wanted to... Let you guys know that, you know, I'm aware of the day and it's been super, super busy and so much more uh, happening. So I wanted to get a video out pretty quickly here when things seem to have slowed down here Friday evening to talk about my thoughts on a highly, highly active day for the Pittsburgh Steelers. So let me know your thoughts. I've talked certainly enough. Let me know your thoughts on the Steelers moves. Do you support a Russell Wilson signing? Do you support the team releasing Peterson and Robinson, if they sign Mitch Morris, are you for that? What should this team target in free agency? They have a bunch of cap space now. I believe Dave Bryan said about $25 million, and so they certainly can basically do whatever they want here in free agency and not be too worried about where they're at financially. So 
Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please like this video. Also, subscribe to the channel. would really appreciate that. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you soon.